Well, Zion National Park is one of the most awesome places in the world, but don't take my word for it. Look behind me. Our photo walk today brings us to Southern Utah and the majestic Zion National Park. So Zion, of course, is a pretty awesome place with these rocks that go so high, they dwarf the biggest skyscrapers all over the world. But when I say Zion, I'm not just talking the National Park. There's a lot more to Zion than just the main canyon. Which we will explore, of course, in depth on today's episode. Southern Utah is huge. We're gonna walk some, we're gonna drive some, and we're gonna take a look around from up in the skies. So our photo walk's gonna begin in the tiny town of Springdale, which dead ends at the park entrance. We're gonna go into the park, we're gonna visit the small towns of Rockville and Virgin, and then we're gonna end up in my favorite Mars-like setting at a park in St. George, Utah. I'm Jefferson Graham. I'm a lifelong photographer, writer, and video maker. I am your guide for today's photo walk of Zion National Park and Southern Utah. Let's talk about gear for a minute. You don't need a big, expensive camera to drag with you to Zion. You can get great shots on your smartphone camera. That's what I've got in my pocket. Most of the shots on today's photo walk will be taken on my smartphone. Zion receives over 5 million visitors most years from all over the world because frankly, we just don't see red rocks like this everywhere. Zion is at the bottom of the state just over the border from Arizona and it's about 45 minutes away from St. George, the largest city in southern Utah. That other awesome park, Bryce Canyon, is 70 miles north, and it's the antithesis of Zion. Bryce is about all those crazy hoodoo rock formations from centuries ago, and the trick in hiking there is to walk down. Here in Zion, you're usually going up the rocks unless you're in the canyon, walking the narrows, which we will explore shortly. The Grand Canyon in Arizona, which also encourages you to walk down deep into the canyon, is a four hour drive from Zion but Zion was developed as a national park more recently in 1919 by President Woodrow Wilson. My general advice is to shoot really early and at twilight for the best light, but you know those red rocks, when the sun is beating down on them, midday looks incredible. For most of the year, the only way to get into the park is to get space on the shuttle bus and you need to reserve that the night before. If you don't get reservations, there are private companies that will sell you a seat on their shuttle for 10 times the price of the official shuttle. The great thing about being here is uh, I get to look at the scenery every day and everybody I meet is on vacation and happy. So before we start exploring with our cameras, I thought it'd be a good idea to check in with local photographer Jason Butler and his design gallery for his ideas on the best photo tips for the area. Well, I think Zion's the crown jewel out here. It's really why I chose to live here. Zion has a little bit of everything, but it's really challenging from a photographic standpoint. You know, it's not, it's not just the one thing you can pick out. It's the endless variety. Well, most of my viewers are gonna use their smartphone. Yep. And I think if they time it right, they can get some pretty awesome shots. So. Yeah, I think one of the things that, that I get from a, a lot of my patrons here in the gallery is, you know, where can I go to watch sunset? Or where can I go to watch sunrise? And I think something to keep in mind is that when you're in a canyon or in a canyon environment, Typically, you want your back to the sun. You know, if you're in California and you're gonna watch the sunset, you go out to the beach and you face west and you watch the sun drop down over the ocean, and it's beautiful. But when you're in a canyon, it's just the opposite. You want your back to the sun and look at what the light does to the canyon in front of you. The thing is here, we can't see the western horizon or the eastern horizon because we're deep in a canyon. So you don't get a chance to see the sunset or see the sunrise, but you get to see what the light does to the canyon walls, and that's what's amazing. You know, if I came to Zion and I could only do one thing, I'd get in the Narrows. I think it's the best thing here by a long shot. You know, there's lots of places you can go look into a canyon. The Grand Canyon comes to mind, obviously, but even here at Zion, you can stand back and take it all in. But when you're in the Narrows, you're in the heart of it. You're interacting with it. It's an intimate experience, and that's very different. And so to me, the, the Narrows is the heart of Zion, and it really makes a difference. To get spectacular shots of the Narrows like Jason does on a camera or a smartphone, you're going to be looking at walking at least three hours into the Narrows. 
Now, Jason tells me that reflected light in the canyon is the key to getting a great shot like this, and you should arrive by either 2 or 5 p.m. and work yourself backwards. Give yourself three hours to get there. And that other must-see hike? Yeah, you know, I think Angel's Landing, it's a lot of hype. People put it on their Instagram and Facebook, of course. Um, and I think it might get a little overdone. And I, I have to admit that Angel's Landing is dangerous. I mean, we've had 17 people die on that hike uh, since 2000, just two already this year. Um, but it, it's amazing. And the view there is incredible from right in the middle of the canyon. It's something else. But what I recommend to a lot of people is if you're worried about heights or if you're worried about it being dangerous, at least go as far as Scouts Lookout, which is at the end of Walter's Wiggles, which is a set of 27 switchbacks that take you right up to this beautiful flat spot right above the canyon. The views there are amazing, and that's good enough. Now, before we embark on those two massive hikes, let's take a look at the definitive iconic Zion Canyon shot in the park. The good news is that you don't have to get on a shuttle bus. You can actually drive in, you could park, you could get out of the car, but the place where many people used to take the photo is now illegal. However, I have a fix. Stopping, standing, or walking on the bridge is illegal, so there's a few other bridges down here. Just walk down the trail past the first bridge and you'll find the second one. The one with a bunch of photographers on it. I think this view's even better than the one on the bridge that you're not allowed to stand on. So you're gonna get the key shot of the flowing Virgin River and the majestic rocks right here. The best time to shoot is sunset when the rocks glow with the twilight hour. All righty, let's start climbing Angel's Landing. Here we come. You, you have to walk up in chains because it's so steep. Some people have died. I'm not going to the top, but I'll show you the beginning of it anyway. End of the line, Angel's Landing. Those are those notorious chains. Little steep for me, but be my guest, please. This was a fun two hour walk. My favorite shots were actually halfway up some of those canyons from the Wiggles. There are many Wiggles. This is just a great little selfie spot, place to rest, place to get some great shots, of course. And if you've got a small enough head, you could stick it right through there and pose. Here we go. How do I look, everyone? Great. Yeah, thank you. Now that's running water from early on right near the park entrance. We're going to go into some water that's a lot deeper in that other big hike in Zion, the Narrows. You know, there's two ways of doing it. You could either jump right in with your clothes on and get really wet in really cold water or pay around 50 bucks for a complete waterproof suit. Well, I'm all duded up now, as you can see. So we're gonna hop a van, go into the park and go down the narrows.
The Narrows starts with a two-mile paved and dry riverside walk before you hit the main attraction, the water. That was fun, highly recommended, great photo ops. Now I've done the Narrows with a suit and without it, let me say, I definitely recommend the suit. Water can be cold, this was way more enjoyable. Also, I shot the entire sequence on one of these iPhones. Now, really great tool to leave your camera at home and if you're gonna get wet, water resistant. A camera in here would be amazing, but I shot the entire sequence on a smartphone because as you know, water resistant, and so it's a really great thing to have with you. This was a great photo op. We're about to do another photo op, flying some drones, not in a park, but somewhere else in Southern Utah. So come on, let's go. We met when we started talking about the art of droning yeah. and flying your drone around here. And you cannot fly the drone in the park, but you can fly it outside of the park. Right. And you've got some great areas. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to show me one. And I feel like the areas outside of the park are just as pretty inside the park. Because, I mean, really, this is all basically kind of Zion, even though we're not actually in the park right now. All right, so we're going to go check out one of them? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's do it. All right. <laughs> DJ's taken me out of town to a remote spot near Rockville called the Gooseberry Mesa, which is beloved by mountain bike enthusiasts and drone fans alike. One of the high points of this photo walk for me is going over this one lane bridge. It is so cool. Beware, once you get off the paved road, there is a long five mile unpaved, really bumpy road until you reach the top. Okay, so DJ, where are we? We are in Kingsbury. It's really popular for mountain biking. They, you can mountain bike along all these rims and stuff. Out here, there's a big, like, huge loop that you can do but today we're just gonna fly our drones. Okay, this is your favorite drone area? One of them, yeah. Well, you know, we have a town of about 600 people and we see about 5 million people a year. 
So uh, it can be pretty hectic to live here. You know, we just have the one main road that goes through the canyon. We have little side streets that are mostly residential. Um, so it, it's, you know, take, take a city of five million people and squeeze it down into a canyon with one main road. And it can be pretty crazy. In the month of July, we'll see almost 800,000 people in the park. So it, it can be pretty hectic. On the other hand, in the winter time, and my favorite time uh, for some peace and quiet here is for about six weeks between New Year's Day and Valentine's Day. And that's when those of us who live here, we try to get away or take some time off because that's about the only time it's slow here in Zion. Otherwise, we're pretty busy year round. So what tips would you have for people coming here? Oh, uh, make sure that you check out the shuttle system because a lot of people come here and they don't have this, anything planned as far as getting into the park and the park shuttles, they fill up really fast and um, they're very limited on how many people they can haul in and out. Even the, even the shuttles in town, like the private shuttles you can pay to bring into the park, they fill up really fast and even all the bike rentals fill up fast. Yeah. So if you come without any plan, you probably won't be able to get into the scenic part of the park, you know, where Angel's Landing and everything is. Jason has some pretty incredible night star photos hanging at the gallery, but to get shots like this, sorry folks, your smartphone ain't gonna work. You're gonna need a bigger camera on a tripod and you'll need to shoot late at night. Jason's recipe, shoot after a new moon. Anytime there's really any more than an eighth of a moon in the sky, it's gonna just blow the stars right away. But if you can come within the three or four nights on either side of the new moon, you're gonna see incredible stars here in Southern Utah. Set the camera's light setting to 1600, put the lens as wide open as it will go, and set an exposure of 20 seconds or longer. You can do this in the menu and use the timer to click the shutter and eliminate camera shake from your finger. Also, take the lens off autofocus and set it to infinity. Before we go, let's explore some of the other areas. We fell in love with a little small town called Virgin, which is on the Virgin River. And this cute little bookstore slash toast store, a former post office. Alrighty, it's time to say goodbye to Zion and head home. But first, as promised, let's stop and see St. George, which is about 45 minutes away, for my favorite Mars-like setting, the red, red rocks of Pioneer Park. <music> episode from Southern Utah and Pioneer Park in St. George. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Look for me on Twitter or Instagram, where I'm at Jefferson Graham. For more detailed mapping information about everywhere we went in this episode, thebestphotowalk.com. You can also go to jeffersongram.net to see galleries from this episode and others. Please stay tuned. We've got a lot here to watch, and I will see you, everyone, on the next Photo Walk. Bye-bye.